allá está Ernesto Luna, que no Ernesto se nunca. Luna, Ernesto who Luna, never no takes away Monaga. his mask. He's a young leader from allá Monaga. Jason Guzmán, Jason Guzmán de from Mérida, is also there. ¿Quién es ese que está a tu lado, Jason? Allá está el gran artista Alejandro Terán de la Guaira. Alejandro Terán, the great artist from La Guaira. Allá veo a Adolfo Pereira. And I also Lara. see Adolfo Pereira de Lara. My congratulations. La Very beautiful the pilgrimage yesterday and the caravan of the divine uh, pastor that went through the state of Lara. I also see Jose Vasquez next to Garrido. Become friends. Guarico and Barinas. Just become friends. And in the very last row, I see Gilberto Pinto from Sucre. I see Victor Clark, a leader from the Falcon State. Freddy Alirio Hernán Rosales. Governor of El Táchira. From protector to governor. That, that, that post of protector was successful. 100%. We earned all the states from 2017. I, I promise in front of the opposition that I won't nominate any more protector. I will ask governors to assume their roles. We need to coordinate. We need to talk. As Garrido once told me, he told me he was a secretary of his party committee. And then later on, he was a parish secretary, municipal secretary. And finally, he was a general secretary of the party of the youth and democratic action. <laughs> And later, he was a general secretary of the party, so he's been coming in in crescendo. And now, he wasn't in the list. He wasn't in, 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 in the gazette. And when we reach and, and he wasn't even registered in, in, in the list. And finally, in the last moment, he went by and he won. So this, this is for you to see how complex politics really is. No one should believe that victory is eternal and permanent. But no one should believe that defeat it's as a punishment. No. Neither victory nor defeat are eternal or permanent. What must be eternal and permanent is the work of goodwill, is the critical consciousness and capacity of learning and listening to people and changing with time and changing together with people. This was an intense battle, and the opposition must actually acknowledge this, that to beat Chavismo is, is very difficult. Galindez told me, used to tell me, the thing is that I won with the vote of Chavism. And he said this from Cojedes. What does this, the socialist party in Cojedes says? This was, this was actually said by Galindez, and he proved it with a notebook he has where he writes everything. It's, it's very difficult to be Chavism. We went to, we went to an, an election as a result of absolute, absolute loyalty to the Constitution. A year ago, we were debating where, whether to carry out elections for government 
in 2021 or, do, or doing it together. This was as part of a national debate. And the opposition put this on the table. Teu called for a uh, joint election, mega elections of governorship and major offices. And that was agreed upon, and that was actually implemented. And I believe elections of November 21st were full success for democracy and for the electoral system in Venezuela. The uh, opposition obtained the best results in the last 23 years. The opposition won 123 majors office out of 335 that we have in the country. 123. We won 212. This is the moment where we've had or we've seen the biggest balance in an electoral process. We went to elections for loyalty to the Constitution and the people. It is, it is difficult to face a process, a political process, when we have so many objective problems created by economic war of all these years. When we have actually been subject to the greatest attacks that have ever been conducted against Venezuela in 200 years of republic. A real war, a real economic war where they have launched several atomic bombs. Professor Carrasco, you are able to explain this very well in your speeches to these national, several atomic bombs to the currency, to oil, the production of gold and circulation of money, to foreign trade, to the, to the right to purchase of products abroad. We must see the face. And we are aware, we're fully aware of this, and I have told this to our team of work and our um, high command, political high command. These elections that we will face could be the most difficult of the ones we have faced since 2015, where we lost regrettably for the country because we had seen a number of problems going up as a result of the criminal sanctions of the, of the blockade, including double blockade. Padre Numa Molino, as you very well say, the double blockade that sometimes we we are subject to the economic blockade technological blockade commercial blockade and also the mental blockade of bureaucrat and corruption officials that have taken important spaces of institutions that are supposed to respond with public services to the country and i do not lie here I put my finger where I have to put it so that you can feel the pain of the needy and the oppressed and those who cry and suffer and those who yell and scream. It wasn't easy to go to this electoral process. In these conditions, Mr. President Jorge Rodriguez, you have had the role of guiding all of the dialogue and political processes with our positions, and you know very well that it wasn't easy. In conditions like this, of a disaster of this nature as a result of sanctions and blockade, any, any country 
would Los eventos electorales hasta nuevo would aviso, postpone electoral hasta process until the presence of symptoms of recovery de la and would postpone de this de type of elections until they recover capacity of financing economic capacity of their population. But we believe, we strongly believe that, that a constitution is alive as long as the people exert their rights. And one of those fundamental rights is the right to elect and uh, practice a political sovereignty. And this was done one more time in this opportunity. We call the Venezuelan people so that they themselves would decide who their governors, majors, and councils will be in, in very dire conditions, very difficult conditions. During these days, we were talking in an interview with Ignacio Ramonet, the objective conditions that these are the ones I refer to in this moment, objective conditions of, of the damage of uh, public services, water, gas, distribution of gas oil, and we were talking about the deterioration of important public services, distribution of um, electricity. And when we were looking for the root of this, we were able we received a blow to be able to provide parts and pieces for the entire industry, the oil industry, refining industry, and gas, electricity, the water. All of this was mounted over the base of a dependence, almost total dependence, with the U.S. technology. Nobody calculated the damage that this could imply as a collateral effect. We could actually say indirect effect, the damage that could cause all of these measures of commercial blockade, financial blockade, to public services, more sensitive services, and the revolution always guaranteed in a very efficient way and in a almost free way with an exception in the Latin American and Caribbean areas. Because we always need to compare the before and uh, and the during, so meaning the past and the present. And we need to know that it was the Bolivarian Revolution in that period, in that wonderful period, a fat cow's period, and uh, growing incomes and not presence of blockade in the year 2014. And we guarantee the public services basically free for the whole Venezuelan population. So this was exception to the Latin American region. As you well know, these services, these kinds of services, you have to pay for them very expensively. For those people who live in Bogotá, Medellín, Quito, Santiago de Chile, and beyond. So, we were in objective conditions that were very difficult, very complex. I would, I would even say painful situation. And in this objective situation, we could actually say, and we can tell the whole people of Venezuela we have obtained a very good result, a balanced result, a fair, necessary. And now what I ask, governors, 
mayors is to go outside and do your work, go and resolve the problems of our people and try to solve the needs of our people. It is your time now. Now the ball is on your side. Como decía un amigo mío, Ernesto, no es lo mismo pedir agua. It is not the same to ask for water than to give water. So I'd like to see you all giving the best of yourselves, moving forward, strengthening yourselves and the whole path so that institutions every time more become stronger in the belief in the popular belief and in the wisdom of a population. This year, 2021, we also activated the political dialogue beyond. We activated the dialogue with extreme rights movements in Mexico. I could say that the presence of dialogue with Mexico was a big success. Patience.